The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Just before the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and in the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and pigeons, and the money changers sitting at their counters there. Making a whip out of some cord, he drove them all out of the temple, cattle and sheep as well, scattered the money changers' coins, knocked their tables over, and said to the pigeons and said to the pigeon sellers, take all of this out of here and stop turning my father's house into a market. Then his disciples remembered the words of scripture, seal for your house will devour me. The Jews intervened and said, what sign can you show us to justify what you have done? Jesus answered, destroy this sanctuary and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews replied, it's taken 46 years to build this sanctuary and are you going to take it up in three days? But he was speaking of the sanctuary that was his body. And when Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said this. They believed the scriptures and the words that he had said. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Amen. Amen. When the <laughs> priest gives us the book of the gospels at the end, he says under his breath a prayer. I'm so old, I still say it in Latin. Uh, that's the way I learned it. But by this, um, per, by the reading of this gospel, may our sins be forgiven. Amen. Amen. That's part of the lit liturgy. Uh, I just meant it more today than I usually do. Um, this John's gospel today, John chapter two. Uh, I, I hope you had a time to read that email that goes out during the week from me about the readings on a Sunday, about the gospel usually. It's totally mine. I don't get it out of any book. I don't rehash something that, that uh, well, I'm rehashing something that I've learned somewhere, but uh, uh, I don't just churn out someone else's work, all right? I really put my heart into it and put some prayer into it, and uh, I presume that you've read that before I started. I'd love to... This is John's gospel. Uh, Chris has asked me to be short today, so... Uh, I know, I know, uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's John chapter 2, and Jesus is in Jerusalem in chapter 2 in John. And in John's gospel, uh, well, in, the, in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus is hardly, is, he, he's hardly ever uh, in Jerusalem. Uh, if you take out the nativity stories, and if you take out when Jesus was 12, and if you... Uh, take out the crucifixion, Holy Week, uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, Jesus is nearly always in Galilee. In John's Gospel, it's the opposite. Jesus is always in Jerusalem uh, pretty well. You know, a couple of weeks ago, he started chapter 2 with this. He was in Cana, in Galilee. Not your head yet, Cana's in Galilee, right? But he was in Jerusalem. And it starts in the temple. The, uh, Jesus cleansing the temple in Mark um, it's the last thing he does before he dies. Uh, in John, it's right at the beginning of the gospel. Could take some time to just to, just tell you to. I'm excited about that, but I'm going to go on. Obviously, the reading's about the temple. And uh, read the blog, please. All right? And let's talk about the dedication of the Basilica of St. John Lateran. All right? Um, let's take John is John the Baptist. The cathedral is dedicated to John the Baptist. Uh, it's there today. It's a great big cathedral. John Lateran, what does that mean? Where do they get the name Lateran? Well, it came from a noble family in Rome. The Lateran family, I don't know anything about them except that they lost all their property when they, did, when they displeased the emperor. Uh, that sort of happened in those days, all right? And uh, the emperor at the time coming in was Constantine, who was you know, was Christian and converted to Christianity and liberated all the Catholic, all the, all the Christians uh, for the first time in the, f in the fourth century. And uh, the Pope at the time, St. Sylvester, was in jail. He was in prison right, waiting to be fed to the lions. And in, in one day, he went from prison to a palace. If ever you buy a lottery ticket, call it Sylvester. 
Uh, he has to be the luckiest man that ever lived, all right? Uh, in, uh, and the great pope and the great saint, and Christianity became uh, an, a part of the established religion, and it was a great change in the world. And for, this is a thousand years before, more than a thousand years before St. Peter's was built, all right? And the pope lived there, except for a small time at Avignon. Uh, popes lived there for a thousand years. And it's still the official residence of the Pope as Bishop of Rome. And because it's old, uh, we commemorate the dedication of this basilica as a sign that we should commemorate on this feast day the dedication of all the churches in the world. Uh, and we might talk for a minute, I'd like to, on the difference between blessing and consecrating and dedicating something to God. All right? Amen. You ready? Yeah. All right. This is, this is school, schoolies a bit. Huh. Blessing. What's a blessing? A blessing is wishing the Father's will on someone or something. Everyone can bless anything, anywhere, anytime, any person. Right? It's not just something what priests do. Amen? Nod your head. Or I'll go back and repeat it. And we'll go back over it again. Hi over here, everybody. All right? So uh, as an example, you bless uh, things all the time. You bless people all the time. Remember how you say, grace before meals? Mm -hmm. In your, all right. How do you start? Say it. Bless. Uh, stop there. That's the first two words. Bless us. Before you bless the food, you're blessing one another. Bless us, O Lord. All right? And then bless the food. And these your gifts. All right? So um, I used to think blessings were something that only priests did, you know? As priests certainly do and personally certainly can. But a blessing is to pray the Father's will on someone. To pray f to, for them what God the Father wants to give them today. Fathers should bless children. The biblical blessing, the history of blessings in the Bible is just so big and so big. Don't forget to bless people. Don't forget to bless one another. Or, or, then, then we have, today this is called the dedication of a cathedral. The dedication is to set it apart so for God's use exclusively. Not only to call down the Father's will on it, but to set it exclusively for God's will. Will the sound follow me when I go over here? It will, because I have a teaching aid today. <laughs> of course, you're in good form. This is the chalice. This is consecrated. What does that, well, how is it different to the cruets or the candles that are blessed? It's different because it's set apart exclusively for God's worship. If you were to drink out of that at a dinner, that would be a desecration. That would be sacrilege. And you come across that in the Bible readings from time to time in the temple. Nod your head, say yes, how are we doing? All right, all right, forget the difference. So when you bless something, you are asking the Father's blessing to come upon it. You are asking the will of God to come upon that person or that thing or that child or whatever we're doing. Bless you. All right? That, that's what you pray. You can do that. You can all do that and you should do that. And you should do it for one another, to one another, for one another. You can bless the cat. You can bless the dog. All right. You can bless your toys. All right. You can, do, you can all do that because you are praying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth and heaven. And that's your intercessory prayer for that person. Got it? All right. To consecrate something is to set it apart. Priests and nuns are consecrated. Set apart exclusively for the Lord. All right? Dedicated. I, I didn't get into quite the difference between a dedication and a consecration, but I think they mean the same thing. The cathedral, we, today we're celebrating the feast of the dedication of the Basilica of St. John Latrans. What's the difference between a basilica and a cathedral? Oh, I'd love to tell you. <laughs> a cathedral, <laughs> cathedral belongs to a diocese. A basilica is a specially named shrine set up by the church that doesn't have a diocese. But the Basilica of John Lateran is the head church of the Bishop of Rome.
but then it was changed to St. Peter's when St. Peter was built a thousand years later on. All right? Just doing terms today. But let's get back to the temple. Jesus cleared out the temple. Uh, very uncharacteristic of Jesus, isn't it? That he made a whip and flogged them and turned over the table. That the fathers, I say in my blog, had took great motivation in their homilies for from the fact that the pigeon sellers only got the table tipped over. You know, he was kinder to the ones that cared for the poor, is the, is the analogy out of that. But John's gospel is all set in Jerusalem. It's so different to the other gospels. And uh, we chopped and changed a bit, but we got it all in. Okay? Amen? Praise God? All right? So uh, this is the day that you commemorate that your church, your, this place, has been set aside for God's worship. We ask God's blessing on it in a special way today in this liturgy. All the prayers are centred around asking God to not only to bless the, the Basilica in Rome of St John Lateran, but asking God to bless this place as we set it aside, dedicated for his worship and for his service, and especially is in our Catholic Mass in this time. So it's not just commemorating something that happened in, in Rome and praying for the Pope, who's the bishop of the church. It's, it's bringing it down to this church and this people and us and asking God as you would bless your family, as you would bless your meal, to ask you God to bless this place of worship.